worship our great God of wonders, our miracle working God. Therefore, turn with me, please, your Bibles, Exodus 15, verses 11 to 13, and I'll read. God has been good. Exodus 15, verses 11 to 13, Miriam and Moses' song. Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you, O Lord? Majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders. You stretched out your right hand and the earth swallowed them. In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. Indeed, God has redeemed us. He led us and he has redeemed us. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. Hallelujah. This is the song of Moses and Miriam after they crossed the Red Sea. The Lord made a way for them where there seemed to be no way. P-I-W-C, the Lord has made a way for us where there seemed for so many years, 17 years, that there was no way. But the Lord has made a way for us. In the fullness of time, he has made things beautiful. In the fullness of time, our God, our Lord, our great God of wonders has made everything so beautiful. Hey, who is like unto him? What shall we render unto him? What shall we render unto him? How are we going to worship this, our good God, our good God of wonders? Shall we rise, please, and begin to just bless the Lord? He is good. He is awesome. He is great. He has done a lot for us. What shall we render unto you, O Lord? You have redeemed us, O Lord. In the fullness of time, you have redeemed us. Father, you led the Israelites, O Lord, across the Red Sea. We also, you have led.
been faithful unto us hey he has never left us just continue to ponder over this great God of wonders in your heart he's a miracle working God he's our miracle
our great God of wonders, our miracle working God, you who have made a way where it seemed for years that there was no way, O oh Lord. You have made a way for us, O oh Lord. In the fullness of time, Father, you made this great divine way. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Father, we lift you up. Our lips cannot even proclaim, O oh Lord. We don't even know. Words cannot proclaim the expression, the thanksgiving in our heart, O oh Lord, that we are grateful unto you for. You never leave us alone. You have proved that you are always with us. And you do wonders. And Father, you make things beautiful in your own time. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Receive your worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God a hand. The presence of the Lord is here. God bless you, Dickness. I will take you. It feels different in here. Amen. It feels great in here. It feels like we own this place. Do we own this place? Do we own this place? Give God the praise and glory. Hallelujah. At this time, I humbly ask that the children, the children all be worship under the auspices of the Church of Pentecost USA and of the International Church. We'll get the time to introduce you. Um, for now, though, there is opportunity for Amen If you're here and you have a testimony please humbly come and share your testimony Amen Give God a hand Somebody has a testimony Amen God bless you. personal but it's about the church Amen. I'm so happy in my heart sometimes it feels as if we bought our own house then I know that there's something different about having something that is your own and it's also all that God does it tells us stories whatever you go through definitely there will be one day God is going to solve it Amen. so as we move in or all these things God is using to tell us something just wait upon the Lord. And so I want us to join and sing this song. Because over and over, God always proves himself. We can always rely on him and we can vouch for him. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him by his word. Oh, 
offering concerning the building. I, I wasn't having money in my account. Uh, so when uh, the announcement came, I started thinking about what I would give. Mm, mm, so uh, that day, I made up my mind to give $200 because I had only $300 in my account. But I was sitting there and said, no, $200, oh, this big building. <laughs> So I just wrote a check for $500. And then uh, before that, um, the IRS wrote a letter to me that I'm owing them, which I don't understand, almost 5,000. So I went to my tax preparer. I said, this is the letter I had from IRS. Then uh, he looked at it. He don't know what to tell me. So this year, uh, when I went back to him, I told him, okay, this is my W-2, and then uh, this is my account. I changed my bank. So he told me, oh, do you think we are going to get something? And then you say you change your account. And I said, no problem. You, This is my new account, so you just have it, whether I receive something or not. So I even forgot about it, that I know I'm not having nothing this year. So last time, uh, I was checking my account on the phone. Then I saw the money. The money came. Uh, more than uh, what he said, I'm. Um, uh, then I'm like, uh, I don't understand this. So I call him tax preparer. And so I then just give thanks to God. Uh, then I had a letter. The IRS said uh, that was a mistake. So I'm like, so I, I don't really know what to say. So I just give thanks to God. So next time, whatever the, uh, whatever uh, our elders said, Whatever decision they bring out, but I let us, I mean, cooperate with them. Amen. This is a real testimony. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, my brother Kofi said, it. if we want to say, come and give testimony today, we are not going to hear the sermon. That's true. So, and there's a saying that. When the big man, the older man speaks, then everything is finished, right? <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll put myself in that. So nobody come again. So we can, uh, the apostle is here, and I'll miss. We, we don't want to miss it. He's a busy man. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. Uh, when we were at the other side, that is behind the Red Sea, uh, we were there, and one day we're loving traveling in this church business, our, everything is kind of low. But we keep on praying to God. So when they finally, when finally we're going to um, receive the go ahead, um, we were worshiping, like just we worship. I was sitting in the middle seat. And after worship, God spoke to me. He revealed something to me. And those who remember, I stood up and I went to say, I said, yeah. I've seen a white paper. Yeah. And the white paper, there are two stamps on it. One at the top, one at the bottom. I don't know what kind of stamp is that. But I took it as God has replied us. Those papers that the, uh, uh, the municipal council were looking for, and that we're not going to get it, and back and forth, back and forth, that was the one. And lo and behold, a few weeks later, a tiny week later, I heard that our papers have been done, right? Yeah. Okay. So I thank God a lot. Now, the second one was on my birthday. That was December on the 30th, exactly 2 a.m. 37 seconds, minutes. 2 a.m. 2.37, exactly that time. I woke up from my dream and I was singing a song that I know, but I don't know the words so well. Then, the Holy Spirit sent me to the Bible. So I opened Ecclesiastes 3, 11. And anybody here know how to sing that song? God has, you said it when you pray. He said, he does, God does things beautiful in his time. I said, what? Are you telling me on my birthday or you telling the church or you telling somebody? So I took it for myself in the church because I am in this church. I've been here more than 17 years, maybe. Hallelujah. So here we are. 
But let me tell you this. This is only the small picture you're seeing. The big picture is coming. Amen. Like you have prayed and you have crossed the Jordan. Last I said, you crossed the Jordan, uh, no, the Red Sea. Now you're going to cross the Jordan to receive the thing that God has said he's going to give to you. Real one. Your feet is in it. Following the, the apostle is here. You follow him. Now when you get to the end, then you know that this is the promise. This is where we are. We are here. But we're going to see the big picture. Amen. Keep on praying. Amen. This place should be a prayer center. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our sister testified and I cannot sit down without telling mine. Um, the Friday before we gave, we did the uh, fundraising. We went to the all night and Apostle talked about it and he said, as for him, he's giving a thousand dollars. Right away, it like went in my spirit. I didn't have a penny in the bank. Now I'm retired and when I get my retirement money, I just calculate and do all my bills. But I felt strongly and said to the Lord that I'll also give a thousand. Amen. Knowing very well that I didn't have a penny. <laughs> but I do not know how. Mm. By that Sunday, I got $300. Amen. So I wrote on the envelope, $300 now. $700 at the end of the month. But guess what? By the end of the week, I had paid the $700. I mean, it's like it comes 100 here, 200 there. By the end of the next Sunday, I had paid it. Praise God. And I was going out of my house that same week after, and I, and the Holy Spirit just, you know, came to me, and I caught myself saying, the jar of, um, the cruise of oil will never cease. Like Elijah told um, the, the widow, and the flower won't cease. Brethren, since then, people calling me here, come to this church, come to my curtain. Mm. This one, come and do this flowers. I mean, it, it, it keeps on coming. And the Lord said, this oil will not cease. I'm saying this to encourage everybody that whatever the Holy Ghost um, drops in your spirit, just obey it. Amen. And it will be well with you. Amen. I'm the last one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm just saying, you know, the testimony has encouraged me also to say something. You all know that about last year, I didn't come to church for almost eight months. I, was, I had surgeries. I have so many bills to pay. I can't mention it. So... Uh, my insurance went up. It's, it was 900, and now they increased it to 1,400. So my boss, they said that it's too much. They can't pay for it. So I was so I didn't know what to do. I said I still need insurance. And uh, when the time came for us, and my husband, you also know, he had a surgery. We have so many bills, and so when I came to church, he asked me, "How much did you give?" I said, oh, "I gave 1,000." So, oh, do you have the money? So I called my credit card and then I told them to put the money into my account. I took the money from the credit card. So my boss called me and said, you know what? I think we are going to pay that insurance for you. Yeah. So the God is so good. So in the midst of all this, yes, trust God and he will do it. Now they said that if it doesn't fall hand or they are going to pay it. And they said that, oh, we are not going to increase your pay because the insurance is too much. And they said that, you know what? We are going to ask something to your people. God is so good. Amen. Giving to God is not a lost cause. Giving shall we give it unto you? Press down. This is when I pray. I don't just say press down. I say press down and press down. So that more can go in there. Hallelujah. It's never a lost cause. God bless you. If you're here and you're visiting us for the first time, this is a special day. Who is visiting us for the first time here? If you're here, first time visitor. We have an apostle in our midst, Apostle Manyani Mahango, for those who don't know him. He's also here with us of Marley Phyllis. Mahango, amen. amen. Without much ado, I'd like to invite to the podium Apostle Manyani Mahango. If you have your Bibles with you, 
Would you do well to take them with me? First of all, Psalm 118, verse 23. Psalm 118, verse 23. And we will also read Ecclesiastes chapter 3, maybe verses 1, 2, 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1, 2, and 3. Psalm 118, verse 23. And then also be first John chapter three verse eight. First John chapter three. Psalm one eighteen verse twenty three. Psalm one eighteen verse twenty three. The Lord has done this. From the NIV, sorry. Psalm one eighteen twenty three from the NIV. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous <coughs> in our eyes. Amen. 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 The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 to 3. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 to 3, also from the NIV. There is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build. Amen. Amen. And the last one. First John chapter three, verse eight. Just the last part. First John chapter three, verse eight. B. For this the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Amen. Amen. And the other verse you say, the purpose for which the Son of Man was manifested was to destroy the works of darkness. Amen. I want to speak on the theme, the destiny-driven Jesus. The destiny-driven Jesus. And that particular destiny obviously took him on the trajectory or the path of suffering. So I'm going to bring these things, two things together. First of all, to do justice to the theme for this month, but also to be sensitive, if you will, to this very unique occasion that we find ourselves in. It's been a long, long while. I think over almost 11 years ago, I had the privilege of Speaking in this church, I have no idea how to be here. You know, I remember some names. I don't people. I don't want to mention them. You know, when you're meeting out there, yeah, in the upper room, I was there. I, I had no idea I would come here to pastor the church. But I'm so grateful Amen. for the Lord's doing. Amen. Amen. Well, the enemy is coming from one side, so. I guess Amen. <laughs> Amen. So the destiny driven Jesus. That is to say, the way Jesus lived his life, he was sensitive to the destiny that God had ordained for him. When we read the Bible, we get the understanding that Jesus pre existed. That is to say, Jesus already existed before he made entry into this world. Am I making sense in here? Yes. Okay? That's why the Bible says, unto you the son is given. It's given. It's given. He existed before. Okay? By him all things were created. Things visible and invisible. So he only appeared in this world that we know. So that you and I can participate in this redemption that God secured for us as a result of the sin of Adam. Now, the text we read from uh, Psalm 118, uh, verse 23, is that this is the lost way and it is marvelous in our in our sight. Did you did you read the, the, the one before it? 
Please explain before the truth. I know we'll go from there. Psalm 118, verse 22. Yes. The stone the builders rejected. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Now the reason the builders rejected the stone because by employing their own skill, their toolkit of skills, in their own evaluation, the stone itself did have a quality, wasn't good enough to participate in this building project. So they rejected it. The stone was to reject means is you are intentional about what you are doing. Am I making sense here? When you say you are rejecting something, it means you are an opportunity to accept it. But you have what? You have rejected it. And there is a reason why you have rejected it. Did you finish James? Yes. All right. One more time. The stone Psalm 118, 22 again. Yes. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Now, it means, now, the question is, if it was rejected, how did it become a chief cornerstone? What is it rejected? Are, are we making sense here? Yes. If it was rejected, it means it's not part of this agenda. Right. But all of a sudden, it means they embarked on the project and nothing was getting done. There was no success until they went back to this particular stone that was rejected at the beginning, and when they brought it forth, it became the chief cornerstone. That is to say, the whole structure itself was centered, dependent upon this what? Chief cornerstone. But the time that they accepted it to become the chief cornerstone, it didn't change anything. It was still the one that they rejected. You're not paying attention. <laughs> the same that they rejected, but this time, how sometimes we get rid of things that we have no idea is treasure. But it doesn't appear to be treasure at the time. But later on, ah, no, I think we need this. I'm gonna make sense here. All right. Now, we'll come back to this one. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes says, to everything there is a what? There is a season and a time for everyone every purpose. Three things I want to emphasize in the course of this presentation. In the pursuit of destiny, Jesus himself had to be sensitive to these three important things. Number one is purpose. Number two is season. Number three is time. And every one of us, every one of us born in this world, you have to go through or to understand nor be sensitive to these three things if you are going to achieve anything at all in this world. Purpose, season, and time. Your purpose, your season, and your time. If you don't understand any of these three things, you will live a life just going back and forth in misery. And you end up regretting. And nobody here at the BC should be regretting. Nobody said anything. Amen. 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 Including your decision to marry must depend on purpose. Now, the truth is, before I married my wife, I, I remember I said to myself, I'm marrying her. When I met her, the first, the very first question I asked her, or was she just in the microphone so she can't even reply? I said, can, can, can you be a pastor's wife? Huh? Can you be what? Can you be a pastor's wife? Because this, for me, this is the purpose for which I was manifested in this world. Amen. So if you can't be a pastor's wife, I don't care how you look. <laughs> it makes no difference. It work. Because if you miss out this particular path, uh -huh. you will start with a deficit. And you will always live on a search in life without any satisfaction. Somebody say something out there. Amen. Amen. Including what you study. And unfortunately, a lot of us Africans, especially, 
We study because there is money in the discipline. Sensitivity to purpose, season, and time is imperative. But you see, God has a greater purpose, and all our purposes, if you will, they flow, they issue, they subsist from this greater purpose. Okay? So, in other words, in your own life, even though you pursue your own purpose, that purpose also, in a certain way, contributes to God's own greater what? Purpose, as it were. For example, look at the testimony they have about the, the giving. Okay? The people gave, they participated in God's own greater purpose. In this case, the building of the church. But at the same time, also, God was, they were also those individuals, they were also able to achieve their own what? purpose, whatever their circumstances is or were. God, at least in those very circumstances, was able to meet them at their point of need. Here is the point. When you are sensitive to purpose, you have no direction. When you have no purpose, or at least, not, not even, no, we all have purpose. But I want to talk about the sensitivity to what to purpose. Knowing that purpose, you have no direction. In fact, if you don't know the purpose for which you manifest in this world, you have too much time on your hand. You have too much time. Too much time. Why? Because you don't see the prayer. You don't know what to do with time. Jesus himself, we are told, John says, for this purpose, the Son of Man was made manifest, that he might destroy the works of God. So when he came, at the back of his mind, he knew he was not going to, he was not even going to live for too long. He never imagined for the moment for Jesus to be a grandpa. Are you here? He never imagined using a, work, a walking stick. Why? He knew the purpose for which he came would only require for him to be around for 33 and a half years. But I guarantee you, 99% 99, 99 of the people in this church, the prayer they pray, I shall live and not die. I shall live and not die. I shall live and not die. So if you don't die, what are you going to be doing here? If you don't die, listen. On. If you also don't die on time, you become a baby. So Jesus himself, by the time he died, he was a blessing. But if you don't time, at the time you're supposed to die, you become a burden. So what's your choice? A blessing or a burden? In between. <laughs> After you have fulfilled your purpose, that's when you exit from the sea. Amen. When Jesus himself fulfilled his purpose, that's when he died. Mm -hmm. In fact, nobody could kill Jesus before his own what? His own time. Amen. Now, because of time, after discovering his own purpose, let's call it, he was going to the temple, even at the age 12. He's asking questions mm -hmm. to the religious leaders, the scholars at the time, not anybody else, because that was his purpose. And apart from that, from the purpose, now he entered the season. But we, we see him being baptized by John the Baptist. And John is confused. Now, why are you coming to be baptized by me? No, no, no. I, John, should baptize you. I mean, I, John, should be baptized by you. He says, no. Suffer it to be so. To fulfill all righteousness. Listen, friend, listen, listen very carefully. Just because God has a purpose for you, that purpose is not automatically fulfilled. I don't know how I can say that. Just because God has a purpose for your life, it doesn't mean everything will just fall in place automatically. There is an, there is an element of you being intentional. Here's the point. Every destiny requires, listen, every divine destiny requires human cooperation. Amen. Every divine destiny requires what? Human cooperation. So if you don't cooperate with God's agenda, God will leave you just like that. 
So by Jesus submitting to the baptism of John the Baptist, he's now cooperating with God on divine agenda. So his own destiny could be fulfilled. Can I get a witness in here? Yeah. And, but, and he didn't go there until the right season. And for, for him, even to go into the waters, when John is baptizing, it's, it's, it's even a, from the, if you're not careful, you think it's a mistake. A story is shared in our church. I don't know how many of you know about this. Maybe you heard about this. Our own chairman, the current chairman of the church, mm -hmm. also Professor Okoye. He said, I think he went to, at the time of Liberia, he was IMD. And when he visited Liberia, he said God spoke to him. He had a dream. God spoke to him that he should allow then Apostle Andumi, who was the national head of Liberia, the Church of Pentecost in Liberia, to pray for him. No, I think he was a pastor. He was a pastor. So in our church now, uh, to be very fair, a pastor does not pray for an apostle. It doesn't look like that. Uh, let alone elders. Oh, no, 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 I didn't say that. But, uh, but, but you understand the point I'm making, right? So it's, 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 almost, it's almost unthinkable. And so chairman is saying, God, are you sure? How can I? And he asked Pastor to me at the time, pray for me. And he knelt down. He was an apostle and an international missions director. It means he's a. In a, he's a boss, let's call it. He's a boss.